morning. Thank you again, everybody, um, for joining in. And we're just going to pray and begin our session tonight. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we just want to thank you for another evening in your presence, Lord God. Thank you for just abiding with us, journeying mercies, Lord, in, in everything, Father, throughout all our circumstances of just today, we give you thanks and we say thank you, Lord. There are many things, Father, with which we, Lord God, have to contend, but you are almighty, all glorious, all powerful. And Lord, we are still standing in your covenant. We bless you. We give you glory for this word. We pray, Lord, you just simply use me as a vessel and just speak to your people as we go through, Lord God, and we just seek to gain more of you. We bless you. We give you glory and honor and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. So we have been going through uh, this you know, very interesting. Uh, last week almost felt like it was, uh, it was a quick one uh, for the start of this lesson. Um, but God knows all things. And so we're just going to go into part two of uh, this uh, sub-series in the stain or the, the subsection or sub-lesson in the stain connected series. Remember now our series, let me put it up for you, those of us who are just joining in so you have uh, some measure of appreciation as to what we're discussing. We're discussing a topic, uh, the series is staying connected. And as you can see from our description, our, our pictorial, we're talking about, you know, it's really from the, the theme of the branch and the vine. And we, our, our, our theme scripture actually comes from John 15, verse 1. And we have been looking, looking at also verses 5. And for this particular series, uh, our session, we, we highlighted the fact that Jesus acclaims and, and gives to us the truth of the matter in that he is the true vine. And it says his father is a husbandman and every branch in me that bear it not fruit, he take it away. And we, we, we highlighted last week that that means that we have folks among us, people in the church, people who we have uh, we associate with from a spiritual perspective. They are they are in Him, but they are not bearing. And from whatever standpoint that bearing of fruit is, Jesus Himself knows what He's looking for in all of us. And so there is a taking away of those individuals. They are taken away, and, and I believe the taking away is always something that is, is gradual or it is something that God does it in his own time. You know, sometimes we may still have folks among us who, according to God's word, they are not bearing as he would have, have ordained or or they would have been put in place to do as what you know the word of God would have required of them, but he still doesn't take them out yet, right? But the important thing as to what we're looking at is the second part of this, of the second clause of verse two, which is every branch that beareth fruit, he does something to that branch because he's divine. And what he does to that branch is he purges it, he prunes it, he cuts it. Uh, and which means that if you are in Christ, then, and you, you are a fruit bearer, and you are delivering in the eyes of Christ, then it doesn't mean, it, you are without, without any, uh, uh, the word I would find is, is you know, escape probably is the word, is not the best word to use 
uh, or you, you, you can't escape being purged. You can't opt out of being purged. You can't avoid the purging. And purging for us comes in various ways, shapes, and forms. Why? The Bible says simply that you may bring forth more fruit. God is interested in you being at your maximum, you being at your fullest, you, you being uh, at your just operating in the summit of your calling. And so in, in order for that to happen, there has to be some purging. And as you know, last week we were looking at the life, the situation, the circumstance of Job and Job being caught, being purged, simply because of his character, simply because the devil did not like the fact that this man was serving God the way he was serving God. And so for all of us here under the the umbrella of grace, serving God in the way we are serving him, we are just a target, just as likely a target of the accuser. Because we, we examined last week that the, the, the Satan is the accuser of the brethren. And he accuses the brethren night and day, it says in Revelation. Here in, in the book of Job, we see where he comes and brings an accusation against Job. And what did we identify last week? The same thing he identifies with us. He says that we only serve God for benefits. We only serve God because God does certain things to stop the deck in our favor. And if he should remove those things, if he should remove the blessings, if he should remove his... In, and in effect, what the devil is really asking God to do is to remove his love and to remove his covenant totally. But where Job is concerned, Job is a unique individual, unique because in this scenario, the devil brings an accusation right in the heavenlies and he is targeting Job at this moment in history, this moment in time. And so our theme lesson for this session, as you know, was, is from Job 13. And uh, we started looking at all oh, that thou would hold all would altogether hold your peace and it should be your wisdom. This is Job speaking to his friends. And he says, hear now my reasoning and hearken to the pleadings of my lips. Will he speak wickedly for God, he says, and talk deceitfully for him? Will he accept his person? Will he contend for God? Is it good that he should search you out? Or as a one man mock at another, do ye so mock him? He will surely reprove you if he do secretly accept persons. Shall not his excellency make you afraid and his dread fall upon you? Your remembrance are like unto ashes, your bodies to bodies of clay. Hold your peace, he says to them. Let me alone that I may speak and let come on me what will. Wherefore do I take my flesh in my teeth and put my life in my hands? He says here, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. But I will maintain mine own ways before him and he shall be my salvation for an hypocrite, and this is the root of the matter here, and hypocrite shall not come before him. A hypocrite shall not come before him. The Lord wants truth out of all of us. 
and the truth that he wants in all of us is a truth that represents us holistically as to who we are before God and before man. So God wants us to be who we are, not what people might think of us. He wants us not to be one way in the congregation of the saints and another way when we are out of the congregation or we are in other circles. He, he wants us to have that fruit and you know, true fruit, right? That's the next thing about fruit, you know. I mean, because something, something like a fruit, a fruit can always look a particular way, but when you taste it, it is, it is something far different from how it looks. Uh, I mean, you know, in, in, in our circles, I mean, many a times you'll go to the supermarket and you will see the grape looking really good and really nice and colorful on the outside. But when you taste, when you taste it, oh God, uh, you know, it's not as sweet as, as, it, as you anticipated it to be based on the look. And it's the same thing here when it comes to God and us and salvation. He wants truth, true representation. And so we opened up last week in the fact that the book is a book of questions. One, it's questioning what is my character because the devil is described as the adversary and the adversary comes before God. No, no, he doesn't go to Job. He goes to God because God is the one who is blessing Job. God is the one who is prospering his hands. God is the one who he, he gives worship to. And this is really at the center of everything. And we will go through a scripture that will show, you know, it, it will just show you how much the devil is a liar. Because at the, at the crux of the situation is what Job is giving to God. Worship worship so the question now is a question of what is his character when placed in certain situation does that character change does that character change when the temperature is turned up in your life does that character change when the situation uh, uh, as is projected to be an evil report does that character change based on the circumstances that are prevailing at the time? And then the question that arises from the book is why am I suffering like this? Why do I go through what I'm going through and why is it that it seems that irrespective of the fact that I've given worship, irrespective of the fact that I pay my tithes, irrespective of the fact that I go to church Sunday after Sunday, irrespective of the fact that I pray on behalf of my children, irrespective of the fact that uh, I, 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 am a bl I am blessed and considered blessed by God, yet I am suffering or I am made to go through a situation that brings pain. Why? And, and perhaps you want to add another question to it because here, this is the devil's challenge in all of this. Is godly integrity worth it? Because, because there are times when you look on the outside and you look in the world and you see individuals who, in your estimation, because remember now, this is going to be your estimation, you are estimating that they are not giving to God anywhere near your level. Yet, in your estimation, 
your suffering is worse or your condition or your situation is even more worse than the man who in your estimation he isn't going to church he isn't doing um what the lord would require granted no you know one of the things we have to understand is that everyone has to answer for his own life and i can't answer for someone else's life by 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 outward observation that is also going to come out in this situation i can't answer for the individual who from my observation is possibly not doing what I would think I am doing in relation to serving my God. God, it is, it is God who is the ultimate judge of all of us. So what can I do? I can pray and I can pray that God will, 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 will see my, my situation, my worth and my circumstance and honor my worship. So, so, so with these questions comes the debate, and the debate really is taking place on two fronts. So in the heavenlies, in the heavenly realm, remember now there's a discussion of, of God and, and Satan, God and the devil, and, and the debate there is do men who are considered upright only serve God because of the benefits? And this is why, you know, even this in and of itself is an important aspect of, you know, how do we present salvation in a secular world where it's, it can't just be about having a church packed with people and, 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 and the only reason why they are there is because we have dangled some sort of 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 you know benefit for being here as against being in the world and in essence what i'm saying is 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 well come to god and he will turn your life around all of that is true but we but there has to also be that balance that we don't serve god for benefits because this was the con the contention in the heavenly realm as it relates to Job and ultimately as it relates to man. He only serves you because you have put an edge around him. And as, and as the, the condition of the, the heavenly realm discussion played out, the next question that came, and it comes on the earthly realm now, as we are going to see and we will discuss, is, are the righteous only rewarded and the wicked punished? Which means that from the standpoint of man, is it that you're righteous because you have been rewarded? And is it that you're wicked because you have been punished? Because that's the eyes, that's the standpoint of, of, of how man primarily looks at things and all of that that earth realm debate really shows the 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 the, the absence of love in the hearts of man because we 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 validate circumstance and we have the, sometimes have that acute ability to, to to evaluate circumstance based on outcome or based on conditions so the fact that i'm going through something means that i must have done something and in the midst of all of this in the midst of all of this the heavenly realm discussion and the earth realm discussion one man is now being put on trial and one man is now suffering Job is in the midst of a man in great grief. He is allowed to experience that, that day where 
I believe none of us would want to have a situation where it's like trouble one after the other. And you don't, before one news ends, another news comes. And before that news is ending, another news comes. The Bible says, while he was yet speaking, which means it was like a avalanche. And at the end, and the last, the last news, it was almost like when the devil got his opportunity. You see, you see, and this is how I know that Satan is, is, is all about stealing, killing, and destroying. When he got his opportunity, notice how he, he lined up the, the destruction. He lined up the destruction in a way where, yeah, okay. The first one, because some, some, for, some, for, for a man with wealth, if I lose some valuables, it's bad and not too bad. If I lose some cattle, it's bad and not too bad. If I lose, God forbid, some servants, it's bad and not too bad. But the very last news that he got of the avalanche was when his children, the same children with whom he, he made sacrifices for, the, the same children with whom he interceded, the last news he got was that his children were killed. So it's like the devil, it's like the, when the devil decides to wound you, my God, he, 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 he's not only sticking the knife in you, but he's turning the knife at the same time. That's how the devil operates. And when the Bible says they lifted up their eyes, now we're talking about uh, the, the, the friends that came, because here Job is in grief, uh, uh, and, and I'm going back and forth uh, with my scriptures, so bear with me. Uh, Job, Job is not at the point of grief after his first test, because this really is after the second test. But I'm just coming here to, to, to show you the kind of grief and the kind of suffering and the kind of psychological debilitation that Job was experiencing by chapter two, that they said they lifted their eyes afar off and what they knew him not. They lifted up their voice and wept. They rent everyone his mantle. These are his three friends and sprinkled dust. It is said that the sprinkling of dust upon their heads was a, it was a common ritual of the day, uh, an expression of severe grief you know when you saw the, the the rising up from the throne and going down in ashes and sackcloth and dust it was a sign of tremendous grief tremendous worry and he says they sat down with him seven days and seven nights and none spake a word why for they saw that his grief was very great. His grief was very great. The casting down of the dust. The, sig the signifying element of how much his heart was distraught. Distraught in grief. He's in the middle of the, 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 what is going to become uh, the, the sandwiching debate of the heavens and what is happening on the earth. And so the devil has his way. And what is Job's first response? Now I go back to uh, uh, Job chapter one. Because even though he, he had grief grief in chapter two at chapter one what did he do after his his kids died he arose rent his mantle shaved his head fell down upon the ground and worshiped 
worship. Grief and worship. I, 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 they're just, they're just in in all, uh, you know, in in all estimation of 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 going through trials. You never associate grief and worship in the same context. Nobody grieves and worships. But Job grieved because the, 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 the arising and the renting of mantle is a sign of grief, is a sign of pain. The shaving of head is a sign of low, your spirit being low. The falling down to the ground becomes now the transition between his grief and his next move. His, his, his next move is to be prostrate. His next move is to honor God, worship. And he says, naked came I into the, out of my mother's womb. Naked shall I return. He, he, it, with all of what's going on, he, he reflects on the facts and he accepts the fact that the Lord can allow certain things to happen. As blessed as we are, as saved as we are, we can go to circumstance where we are allowed by the sovereign grace of God, the sovereign power of God. Because you know what? Let's, let's just think about it. There are many atrocities that we have seen in the world. We look at the you, we look at Ukraine. We look at um, these shootings that take place in 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 the U.S. We look at various egregious things that have taken place even in in Jamaica. We look at so many atrocities all over the world, and we see the brokenness of the world. Somebody through 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 those dire circumstances has to have the ability to know that it's grie it, it's gruesome, it's grievous, it's it's it 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 pains you to your belly, but yet have the the, the fortitude to worship. And, and I can tell you this. Job has to be the, 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 the man most qualified for this because not everybody meets this criterion. Not everybody can be hit with some, some, some kind of news and not just be weeping and not find that grace to worship. The Lord give it. The Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He accepts that in his life, God also can allow this level of calamity. And you can only truly worship if you can accept it. It's not easy to accept. It is difficult. It is perhaps, it is perhaps for, for, for many of us, the deal breaker. Certain things, if certain things happen, my worship don't. If certain things happen, that 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 is it I, I, god gonna have to give me the grace that is sometimes our expression but here is job fully prepared after going through one thing after the other after the other after the other to accept that in his life i can receive blessings of the lord and i can also i can also experience trouble because we live in a world of trouble. But this, but this was not just any kind of trouble, that, because that's the next thing. This is targeted trouble. It is being targeted. And he doesn't know that. He just sees it as grief. He just sees it as pain. He just sees it as trouble in his life. And that is just one aspect right this is just the first trial and this is his first response the next thing in 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 all of this is that 
even though you are grieving and you have found uh, you have found perhaps you have found that that five percent that ten percent will to worship don't 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 let your let, don't, don't let your grieving be less significant don't let your your grieving be be thought of as as weakness because some folks believe that you know the fact that you go certain things have happened to you because you're a child of god oh you shouldn't be responding that way and you shouldn't be you know you you shouldn't be doing such and such a thing he job found the grace to worship and sometimes you go through some situation you're crying but you still find the grace to worship you're crying but you still find the grace to give god thanks you're crying but you still give you know you you find that that place where you can find a song, find a word. Don't let anybody limit that. Because sometimes the, the reason why they are doing that is because they have never experienced what you are going through. And it is not until they experience the same grief that you are feeling that sometimes you see their reaction and you wonder, my God, they are behaving even worse than you in the situation. So don't let anybody tell you you shouldn't cry. Don't let anybody tell you you can't express that grief. Because God will also give you the grace to accept and to worship and to give him thanks. And that only really comes by having faith in God because this is not about years of experience it's not about how much how long you have been a Christian because when grief hits you certain things hit you when certain situations in your life hit you this is this is a one after the other after the other and for some of us it's just one thing and we fall out so Job is worshiping in the midst, in the midst of his, his, uh, his first test, his first, uh, you know, the greed, the, 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 the outrageous test that he's been put through. The Bible says that in all this Job sinned not, and, and we have to categorize this now, in all this meaning his first test. Because every stage is being evaluated. Every stage is being evaluated by God and the devil. And in all this stage, in all of his, uh, while he was yet speaking, the atrocities that were happening and the losing of his family, in all of that, the Bible says he sinned not, nor charged God foolishly, didn't charge God with folly, didn't speak out of of context as it relates to god uh, the, the, the the chuck smith commentary puts it this way i would like to say that i have heard many people charge god foolishly maybe they didn't curse god but they have made foolish charges against god for example i've heard people say i don't think god cares about me at all i don't think god loves me those are foolish charges, the commentary says, against God. Sometimes because of our circumstances, we are prone to make foolish charges against God. But Job didn't do that. He passed test one. Some situations, as this one is, is designed for you to say something out of your mouth in the environment that makes God look a particular way, or, 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 or you are saying things that are just an expression that is wrong. I don't think God loves me. You, you, we go through certain situations and it seems that as you go through one thing, another thing happens as you go through, uh, maybe may curse. We have to be careful because those things are charging God foolishly. 
maybe me just not get I just some and and sometimes there are some simple things we we may say right that we we we, we don't really understand and analyze that those things emanate from our 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 psyche or our psychology from our from our our inner thinking and 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 they become ingredients for the kind of thinking that we develop where we because all of those things destroy faith it destroys faith instead of the situation being a catalyst to build faith because we end up saying things about god because uh, and this comes from the, the misnomer that i mean if if you're God's child, then certain things must happen a particular way, and it must happen a particular way. It, it, it doesn't work like that. Who is in God, get purging. Who is in God, get cutting. Who is in God, because there are some who are in God and not bearing anything, and they are taken away, but you are in God, and God sees the best in you, and the, for the for the best in you to reach its summit, there is cutting. So in all this job charge, uh, he sinned not, and charged he didn't charge God foolishly. And the response after the first test by God to the adversary remained the same, because. Satan's reflection, though, Satan realized that the worship that he, he, he emanated out of Job from the first test was, an, was a square defeat of what his impression was. And so, and so here it is. And I'm probably jumping my slide a bit, so let me go back here. The, 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 the question after the first test remained the same, if you notice. God just asked back the same question. Have you considered, why is your heart set against my servant? Because he, he what? He, he is upright. He worships me in the middle of tragedy. He will not charge me foolishly. That's why he puts away evil. But still, your heart set against him. Because I gave you your opportunity. You slayed him one time, and the man is still worshiping. And this is the devil's response. Here is the devil taking it to another level. Because again, here, he, he puts another... Uh, um, you know, another context on the table about us as human beings, where our highest priority then is really our own self-preservation. Yes, I bless you, my sister. I bless you, my brother. God bless you. But when it comes to preservation, I want the blessing for myself. When it comes to our own life being preserved, uh, I look after my picnic first. That sort of context. So, so, so it's like, even though we profess to be people who are born again, but put us in a particular situation where our life now becomes on the line, because this is the, 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 the first test, the devil was really saying, we serve God for benefits. So take away the benefits. And he was allowed to take away the benefits. The man still worship. No, he's going after the man's life. So he says, skin for skin, yea, all that a man heart he'll give for his life. The pulpit commentary puts it this way. Satan means that to keep his own skin. So, so he's really saying, well, yeah, he, he'll worship because honor him, honor him get, get in the accident. Honor him get, you know, get stick up. Honor, honor him get the gunshot wound. Honor, honor, honor his life was on the line. Skin for skin. A man will sacrifice another's skin ever that of his nearest and even that of his nearest and dearest. 
Job he insinuates submitted to the loss of his children without a murmur because he feared that otherwise God would stretch forth his hand against his person and smite it or destroy. So, so he's willing then, he's saying, to sacrifice other people's life than his own. Yea, for a good man, some would even dare to die. He's saying that, well, yeah, you do it, sure. His, his life is not on the line. His life is not on the line. And so the only way, the only way to kill that debate is what? The only way to kill that debate Is God's response, which is okay, I'll put his life into your hand, but save his life, which means that the devil now has all authority, the devil has all um avenues, and, and he has been given, he has been given the license to touch the man in any way shape or form that he desires except to kill him i can i can i i can cause him to be injured i can give him some kind of disease i can give him some kind of ailment i can make him wake up tomorrow and realize that there is some sort of cancer oh my god i i, I can do something to to, to all of a sudden uh, make him become fearful of his own life and and that will invoke a cursing against god this is this is the the essence of the situation from the devil's point of view is that when we get into trouble and it seems like there is no way out of the trouble because the devil the devil in the conversation between God and the devil, there was no talk of Job's restoration. There was no talk of Job coming back from whatever situation. He was to, there was no discussion as to say he, there would be any form of recovery. Perhaps, perhaps it could have been where, well, he could have lost it all and remained poor the rest of his life. He could have now been in the hand. He is now in the hand of the enemy. But that's literally what it is. You're in, he's in the hand of the enemy and the enemy can do absolutely anything he desires to do with the man except to kill him. Uh, that must have been a great honor to have been so selected. I, I pray not that uh, that kind of God has to God has to know you inside out to put you in the hand of the devil in that sort of way because because that you know it in, it not in a sense that it goes against scripture in any way, shape, or form, but this in, in, in and of itself is a unique circumstance. There is no other job in the Bible. But what can we learn from this sort of situation? That there are some things where it feels like you are in the hands of the enemy. There are some times when it feels like your situation because it is a person, it is not just now about your things. It's not just now about what you own or, or, or what has been given to you or what you have jurisdiction over. This is now about your personal health, your personal uh, body. Your, it, it is about you, your life. And so, and so the, the, the next aspect of this, and this is, where, this is where the great grief now, because remember, remember what happened after that from Job uh, in, in, in verse seven, 
was that Satan went forth, I'm reading now from uh, my notes, Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord, and what did he do? And smote Job with sores, boils, sore boils from the sole of his head unto his crown. Now, there is something significant because, okay, this is sore boils. Sores, uh, okay, monkeypox. Uh, no, no, no. Yeah, no. But 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 the thing about that situation back in those days, remember now, remember now, the, 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 and, and this is where it leads to another kind of context because sores and boils were always in those times an indicator. Remember now, even in the Jewish law, in the, in the laws that were, sorry, the Hebrew law, the, that was given to Israel, people of a particular kind of ailment were put outside of the camp. They were considered not to, be, to come among those persons that were in, uh, you know, in the camp and were in a particular state of health. People with leprosy. The same thing, breaking out, boils. The people with certain sores were put outside because you were considered unclean. You were considered not, not, not worthy of being in, in, in the presence of other people. So, there were, so the sores and the boils was, was, was and, and you know, when you think about it, it, it becomes that catalyst for Job's humiliation, because that's what it is really about. Sometimes the devil will take your stuff and that bad and not so bad, but he moves in a way where he is trying to humiliate you. So there are certain things that he allows you to go through that, that in essence becomes a catalyst in your mind for humiliation, for, for, for you to be thought of in a particular way. Some things happen to you in, in, in the church. Some things happen to you. Divorce is a sign of, some people look at that as a sign. Oh my God. And you will never understand it until you experience it, that there are some situations that are designed by the enemy for your humiliation. Why? Because instantly and and, 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 and immediately you become ostracized. You become taken out of the environment. And this is why when it, the, 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 the friends of Job came and they looked upon him, they couldn't recognize him. Why? The sores and the boils took over the man's entire body. It's not cancer, him, it's not... It's not HIV him have is not some sort of disease him have that uh, that he, that you couldn't see what was happening perhaps because it was on the inside it was totally external why because the devil wants to humiliate and to break down how you are perceived and how you perceive God in the midst of all of that. And this ultimately now becomes, it, it brings the discussion down to the earthly realm. And, and, and what I describe going forward from, from the rest of this is nothing but foolish speaking. Foolish speaking. Why? Because if you notice, and you probably you know, if you have read the book of Job, you will, you, will un, you, you, you will see that the discussion between Satan and God takes place in probably three or four verses, five verses probably at most. Don't quote me on this, but it's very limited. And it takes place in two chapters, one and two. But notice for the next 30 chapters of Job, the problem Job has is with people. The problem Job has is with how people on the outside 
are assessing and analyzing the situation from the eyes of man. And if they would analyze the situation and keep quiet is one thing, but they are analyzing the situation and they are expostulating on behalf of God because apparently they believe they know more than what God knows in this situation. And so, 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 so they are putting forth their points of view for the next 30 chapters Job's grief turns into a, a search for comprehension at the level of man. Why? Simply because of the, the, that same mood that we put forward of the earthly. Is it that only the righteous are rewarded and the wicked are, are written off? Is it that you only get certain things if you're righteous? and certain things only happen to you if you are wicked. And notice now that in all of the foolish speaking where it began, it began right in Job's house. It began because look here, the devil is crafty, you know. You ever, you ever wonder why the devil, the devil never take Job's? Well, well, one, because God had sanctioned that so he couldn't touch I believe that was a part of the sanctioning where God gave to, to the adversary in the first instance where you can't touch Job, which means you can't touch Job's wife, but you can't touch him things and touch him children. And he says everything but his life. So he could have taken out the wife, but he didn't take the wife out. He afflicted the man bodily. And here comes Job's wife saying, well, why are you still hold on to this integrity business? Why are you still worshiping? Why are you still, why are you still giving God glory? Better to curse God and die. And look at, this is what the commentary says. Job's wife had said nothing when the other calamities had taken place. I mean, it's, that's, you know, that's the view of the writer. I can't say yes, I can't say no, but she isn't mentioned. So we can, we can safely say she wasn't brought into the conversation. He says she refrained her tongue and kept silent, though probably with some difficulty. Now she can endure no longer because her husband is now being afflicted. To see her husband so afflicted and so patient under his affliction. Some people mad with you because you're patient and they're affliction. Some people upset with you because they, they think you must get rile and, and raucous and start blame God and start blame the church and start blame everybody. Some people are upset at that temperament, believe it or not. So she's upset that he's so patient under his affliction is, and that is more than she can bear her mind. He says he's weak and ill-regulated and she suffers herself to become satan's ally and her husband's worst enemy it is noticeable that she urges her husband to do exactly what satan had suggested that he would do satan has a way of translating what he wants you to do through the mouths of other people and this is why it is so important that we are discernful. We have the Spirit of God walking up and down in us to understand that is not that sometimes under certain situations when calamity calamity can change how Christians view things. Calamity can change how Christians view other Christians and their responses. Calamity and and you know it. Difficult circumstances can bring out certain things out of your same brother in Christ that make you surprised. And, 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 and sometimes what the advice that they will give you going through what you're going through, you, you turn to yourself and say, and you say you're safe? And you say you're a Christian? You're telling me if you do this? Big? And, you, and you have to wonder to yourself. Some, and, and this is why it is so important speaking if you notice 
one of the the, 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 the the subject matters we spoke about first was, and I'll go back to it before I continue. I'm at slide 15, so I'll come back to this to 15. Notice what Job is, oh, that thou would altogether hold your peace. And that should be your wisdom. Sometimes when you're going through certain things, it's better just don't say nothing. Sometimes when you're, when you're so weak till you're at the point of feeling as if you can't, you can't go on another journey, sometimes it is better to say nothing. The groanings and the utters, the, 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 the groanings that cannot be uttered, the Bible talks about. The things that you, you will experience. Sometimes it's best not to say nothing. Sometimes it's important to know who is there trying to give you encouragement in your weakest hour. Sometimes it is better. Because some, some encouragement, because look, as, 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 as we will see, as we will see the, 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 the more the grief started to set in, even Job himself started to think certain things. And that is, that is what grief and you know, difficult situation does. When difficult situations begin to prolong and extend, and it seems that there is no end in sight, that alone will test you. And sometimes you don't mentally say certain things, and then sometimes you do. For, for instance, if you're writing, if you're writing in Job, uh, Job 3 verse 1, what does Job say? He opened his mouth and said, curse is day. Job spake and said, let the day perish wherein I was born. So the easiest way out of this would have been that I was not born. Why? Because he... He worshipped in, 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 in chapter 1. He didn't charge God foolishly in chapter 2. But now that his, his situation is now out there and it is upon him, and there are people who are observing and have their, the things that they want to say, no, it takes on a different kind of, of attitude. It takes on a different kind of meaning. And sometimes your tragedy, your adversity, your, your difficulty is, is, takes on a different meaning, all based on who is watching and who is observing and what you think, what you think they are thinking about what you're going through and sometimes what they say to you. Because here is Job now cursing the day he was born. In fact, he goes on to say in, in, uh, in Job, in chapter 6, verse 4, For the arrows of the Almighty are within me. The poison whereof drinketh up my spirit. The terrors of God do set themselves in array against me. Notice, and, and, it, and it has to rightly be this way. Because the reality is, he's not blaming the devil. He's not upset with the devil. It, it all has to point, the fingers all has to point to God because the, 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 the debate in the heavenlies is, will he forsake God if God allows calamity? So it must feel like is God doing it to him, although is the devil doing it to him? Is, it, is the devil smoting with swords? Is, it, is, the, is the devil causing all of the ailments happen to him externally? But it feels like a God alone. And that, 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 that is even more powerful than the fact that it is the devil who did it. And so he says in verse 8, Oh, that I might have my request. What is his request? That God would grant me and the thing I long for, verse 9, even that it would please God to destroy me. No, 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 here is he. He didn't sin against God, but no, he is talking negative about himself. That he would lose his hand and cut me off. And part of the reason why he's saying this is because we go back to verse, we go back to three, Job chapter three. 
and I'm just putting this for you to, to put this. This is his greatest fear. What is his greatest fear? Job 3.24, for behold, my food, uh, 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 my food, my sign cometh and poured out as waters are my roarings for a fear, a fear, no, no. He said, a fear I feared and it meted me and what I was afraid of does come to me. What is he afraid of? He wasn't afraid of losing stuff. He was afraid of being viewed as an hypocrite. He, and, 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 and this is what the situation now transferred into. Because this is the debate of man. Man's debate is that you can't be so holy and so upright, yet you are going through these things. You can't be so upright and you can't be so godly, yet you are suffering. Because if you're godly, you're not supposed to suffer. His tribulation made him look hypocritical. And that comes out even further now in the debate between his friends. His friends are saying, remember Job 4 verse 7, I pray thee, Whoever perish being innocent, whoever, whoever goes through this stuff and are, are innocent. You know, there are some folks who in church right now and have, and, and, have, and have had historical dealings with people who believe that if certain things happen to you, it's because you sin. If certain things, if you're going through certain things, that certain things just don't work or you think it should work, it's sin in your life. They used to say, you don't have the Holy Spirit, something in your life. You don't get filled with the Holy Spirit, well, look and see what is in your life. Who says something is in your life? Who says God doesn't want you to, to be a more, a more urge, urgeful worshiper, a more, a more, somebody who is more pouring out? Who's to say that God doesn't want you to be more at the altar, at his feet? before he fills you with his spirit. Why must it be sin? Why must it be? Because that's the thinking of man. You must have done something, Job, even as I have, verse eight, even as I have seen they that plow iniquity and so wickedness reap the same. You think, you think that is even, even, even worse. Zophar said, Straight up in Job 11 and 1 and 2, you're a hypocrite. You talk, you, you talk, and you talk. Remember, no, no, there are various conversations that are taking place, and Job is answering back and forth in 30 chapters of contention between his friends. Because even this guy, Eliphaz, when if you read verse 4, it's as if he, he's saying, you know, some folk, well, I'm going to say something, but I know it won't hurt your feelings. <laughs> I'm going to say something, Job, but I know it won't hurt your feelings. And that's how he started chapter four. Read it and you'll see it. But he's going to say it anyway. And this is, this is for the next, and this is the, 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 the real context in the book of Job when it comes to the earth, the debate. God and the devil, will he not worship? Man, at the end, look at your circumstance, and if they are not godly and wise enough and, and, and patient enough, all they see is that you must have done something wrong. As Zophar said in, in 11 verse 1, then answered Zophar the Nehemite and said, verse 2, should not the multitude of words be answered, and should a man, should a man, full of talk, be justified. Verse 22, Job 22, sorry, verse four. Will he reprove thee for fear of thee? Will he enter with thee into judgment? Speaking of God now, in, in defense of Job. Is not thy wickedness great? 
Job 22, verse 5. And thy iniquities infinite. So here it is. This is the sometimes what the devil uses to try to destroy you are the same people that are around you. Why? Because they do not have spiritual discernment and you have to be so careful not to let their words become seeds for you to curse God. Don't let their words become seeds for you to walk away from God. Don't let their words become seeds for you to give up because of what you're going through. What you're going through is not you. What you're going through is not reflective of where your standing is with God. What you're going through is simply a test that God knows you can overcome. Foolish speaking. From for 30 chapters, it is nothing but men trying to speak on behalf of God. And this is why he says in, in our theme chapter, here now, will he speak wickedly for God? Will he accept his person? Will he contend for God? You know, some folks, and that's all they're doing. They're looking at your circumstance and they're judging your left, right, and center. Because sometimes the biggest situation, the biggest issue about our situation is what is being uttered what is coming from our lips what is coming from our thoughts as we go through what we're going to what are we saying that is cursing the very atmosphere that 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 all it is is a place for your next level move that you are going to bring forth more fruit what is the things that we we are allowing our thoughts to wander into simply because of what we feel we are going through and be careful of the folks around you. Some people, you need to just, just cancel them out of your environment because they are, not, they are not helping what you're going through. Sometimes because of what you're going through, you're going to not gain friends, lose friends. And then you'll have those people who will feel that all they're there to do, yes, they, they said they came to comfort, but by the end of the comfort, you feel worse than a dog. And if God doesn't help you, they themselves will be digging your curse. Foolish speaking, this is man's response, trying, trying, to, to search for the comprehension of, of, of the, 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 the question, why do the righteous suffer? Because here it is in the dialogue, the dialogue with his friends, the nature of retributive justice. It is always true that, is it always true that the righteous are rewarded and the wicked are punished? Remember, David said his eyes almost slip when he looked at the wicked. But why are you looking at the wicked? The argument and the principle they have is that, well, if you're godly, good things must always happen to you. And no such thing. The Bible says all things work together for good. Because in all things, what we have to prove is one, the love of God. And in so doing, in so doing, we are proving also that we love God. We are proving that we will worship God in spite of what I'm going through, irrespective of how the situation changes, irrespective of the outlook. Because sometimes we thought that the outlook, we would have been moving in a particular direction, but all of a sudden it, it moved in a different direction. Is my attitude and my character going to change? Sometimes I can tell you even personally, sometimes when things shift, 
you feel that lowness in your spirit. You feel that defeat in your spirit because you thought things were going to work out in a particular way and instead they are turning in another way. What are you going to do? For sure, you can't lose who you are in God. You can't lose who you are while you are waiting. And this is why Job said, though he slay me, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. In other words, yet I will wait for him. Though the situation feels like God kill me, I will wait, I will trust, I will put my faith in him because my life doesn't belong to me. And with all the godly character I have, I am not owed anything because of it. I am not owed any blessing from the sovereign, sovereignness of God. I'm not owed anything because I show up at church today or I am on the deacon board or I am so and so. I am not owed anything by God. By grace are ye saved and this is the gift of God. He says, I will maintain my own ways before him. I'm not going to be a hypocrite. I won't change. And in the, and in the other sense, in, in, the, in the other sense, because sometimes suffering does changes. And in the other breath, sometimes riches does changes. So, 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 so here it is. And that's, the, and that's where... I, I, I was, you know, I was bringing out the fact that the, the devil is a liar. Because all the devil wants is your worship. That's all the devil wants. In one man's honor of God, he uses, he tries to use his wealth against him. And for you who the devil thinks have no wealth, he will say, I will give you wealth if you turn your back on God. How do we know this? St. Luke chapter 4, verse 6. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee and the glory of them, for this is delivered unto me, and whomsoever, notice you know, it is delivered unto him, just as all Job was delivered into the hands of, of the enemy. So here is Jesus' test. For that is delivered unto me, and whomsoever I will give it. What he says in verse 7 of Luke chapter 4, If thou therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. The devil is a liar. All the devil wants is your worship. All the devil wants is that you turn your back on God, whether he use calamity, whether he use things that affect you personally, whether he uses riches, he just wants you to curse God. But Job says, though God slay me, I am staying through the slaying, though it feels as if he's putting my life through a particular, particular uh, ringing, I will wait for God to answer. Though it feels like I am not seeing the fulfillment of what I expected to see, I will maintain my worship. I will wait for God. And th there, are some, there are some very incredible sayings that have come out of the, 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 the pain of Job's circumstance. And the final one I'll leave you with is this one. He says, for I know. Remember, in our last lesson, we, Paul, said, Paul said, I am persuaded that nothing shall separate me. Job 19, in all of his ups and downs and his thinking and, his, and, 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 and sometimes his falling off in his thinking, he said this, for I know that my Redeemer liveth. And why does he speak of a redeemer? Because in those times, you know what the redeemer is according to the law of kingship. The redeemer is the kingsman who buys back 
who delivers, who avenges. And he shall stand at the latter day. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh I shall, I shall see God. Though I am going through the situation, yet I know my Redeemer lives. Though I'm going through the situation, I've not seen the victory yet, but I know that God is on my side. I know that even though it, fe it feels like God is putting me through something, the same God that is putting me through this is going to deliver me from it. And two things happened at the end of this scenario that is quite notable as we close. Quite notable. The same man who they were chastising had to, had to lay down offering and sacrifice on their behalf. If you read it, let me find it for you. In Job, Job 42 and 7, the Lord rebuked Job's friends. And he says this, and it was so after the Lord had spoken these words unto Job, the Lord said unto Eliphaz the Tiamite, my wrath is kindled against thee and against thy two friends, for ye have not spoken of me the thing that is right as my servant Job had. 42 verse 8 says, Therefore take unto you now seven bullocks and seven rams and go to my servant Job and offer up for yourselves a burnt offering. And my servant Job, the same man who's going through, the same man with sores and boils, shall pray for you. For him will I accept, lest I deal with you after your folly, in that he have not spoken of me the thing which is right, like my servant Job. And for all he's going through and all the contention, Job becomes the man who stands in the gap for the same people who are persecuting him because of what he's going through. So sometimes you're there and you are going to be the person who has to stand in the gap for the same people who are trying to talk evil about you. And this is why it's important to maintain your ways before God. This is why it's important not to succumb to the pressure of the trial, not to succumb to the pressure of the circumstance, because you, this is where you now become bearers of more fruit. This is where your fruit becomes special. And not only that, the Bible says that Job was rewarded double. Because he was the man that was put on the chopping block. And so, as we go through our situations, as we go through our trials, as we go through our circumstances, let's remember, let's remember, let's remember that where we are and who we are in God counts. Let's remember. That not every response is a response that comes from God while you're going through a certain situation. Let's remember that God has not forgotten you. Don't charge God foolishly. Don't say stupid stuff. God don't love me. Why well, I feel cursed. Sometimes it might even enter into your spirit. The devil is a liar. You have, we have to learn to turn those situations. Because there's nothing on you that is cursed. There is nothing on you that is not blessed. Simply just because you're going through a, 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 a situation. In fact, the, the, the fact that you are going through it is, is sometimes a testament to the power of God that is in you. Because many have gone, many have come that pathway and have, have not returned. But God knows that you are able 
you have more power. So he purged you. He cuts that you may bring forth more fruit because you, God has determined that you have to stay in the vine. And whatever it takes, God is determined that you stay in the vine. Stay connected through your trials. Stay connected through the purging. Stay connected through the difficulty. Because trouble don't last always. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Any comments? Amen, amen. No comments going once, going twice. Like my, but, oh, okay, I hear, some, I hear something open up, so let me keep quiet. Sometimes it tastes so hard, we have to ask for more grace to withstand. Uh, sometimes, brother, it's really, really tough. But God is able, and as Job went through, we will be able to, um, you know, go through with God's help. Yes, yeah. true, true, true. You see, I, 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 I also believe, you know, and and it, and, and I think it's important. The, 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 the writings of Job sometimes is very difficult to follow. And, and that's why it's important, I believe, if you're going to read the book, to have some sort of guide, some sort of aid with you as you read. Because sometimes you will also see that God, God allows everything for a reason with every man on this earth. Because as much as, as God spoke of Job's God himself spoke of Job's uprightness and Job's, uh, you know, his, his, his worship and his sacredness and his devotion. Yet when Job began to talk some foolish stuff, <laughs> <laughs> yet when Job started to talk some foolish stuff, better me Lord, I was, I was born, but I was, but I was not born. God right. have an answer for him to further down. Where were you? Mm, it's pressure, you know, man. Pressure and Pre pressure. Yes, because, because the, just, the, the, the situation is the there are more eyes that are now looking at his condition. And sometimes mm -hmm. when more eyes that, that are looking at you, or you feel are looking at you, and sometimes the eyes are your own eyes, that are mm -hmm. thinking a hundred and one things about your situation. God. Yeah, because sometimes, you know, we, we are our worst friends, you know. We, we are Eliphaz and Zophar mm -hmm. all wrapped up in, and Job all wrapped up in one, you know. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes you don't need three friends because you, you are your own three friends talking yeah. about your own self. And so, and so in the midst of all of that, we see mm. Job sometimes he has his highs and his lows and he, and sometimes he, he he comes out with 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 a with a phrase for the ages for i know that my redeemer limit live it yeah. and then he goes to the very low of talking about i i wish god would just kill me <laughs> pressure yeah yet, yet god said upright Mm. So, 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 who are we to 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 assess, right? It's it 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 it, it is for us to, to take all of the different learnings from 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 Job's life and understand what God looks for. 
He said it, you know, he said it in verse 30, a hypocrite shall not stand before him. So, so, mm. so, so in essence, some, when, when Job is being real about how he feels, so that's the next thing, you know. And, that, and that's why I said, sometimes you, you are being real about how you feel, but that realness, that realness ought to also support the character that God sees about you. And that is where we are a work in progress. Because sometimes we fall short, but God knows who we are, what yes. we're capable of. And that is why mm -hmm. in, we go back to John and we, 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 we know that we are in God and we are, we are remaining in God. Why? Because he is pruning and cutting, but not taking oh, us away. Yes. Mm. Amen. Any, any further comments? Any, any other input before we close? All right. If there be no more comments, then let's pray. I thank you for uh, just hanging in there as we went through this. I pray that there'll be, you know, much food for thought as we face mm. our daily circumstances. Look, life is a challenge. Life is, and there, every aspect of life, there is an aspect of challenge. Mm. And it's for us to know that irrespective of what we go through, God knows that we are able and that we will come out victorious because he is our redeemer yet at the same time we have to understand that we don't owe god anything or god doesn't owe us sorry god doesn't owe us anything in this relationship just like the three hebrew boys who said well we know he can but if he does not we will still not bow because mm. our character is going to be representative we will not be a hypocrite and bow to your god nebuchadnezzar simply because you are threatening us mm -hmm. so life is threatening your health a bad report is threatening your health this is where through the difficulty and to the grief remember now i said that don't let anyone tell you you can't cry but in the midst of all of that Mm. You, we have to remain resolute. Amen. In the midst of things not working how we expect them to work. Because remember now, we may not go through quarter of what Job go, has gone through. But our situation can be just as difficult based on our circumstance. But even in those situations, we have to maintain our ways before him and wait. And Sometimes it's better not to say anything. Shut up and wait until the victory comes. In the name of mm. Jesus, I just want to bless you. Mm. We want to give you glory. We want to give you honor. We want to give you praise. Lord God, your divine sovereignness, Lord, your sovereignty over us, Lord, speaks your love and speaks your comfort to us in the midst of trial, in the midst of tests. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just want to bless you, Lord, for the purging, for the pruning, for the situations that never went our way, for the circumstances that didn't work out quite how we expected them to. But yet still, Lord God, we know that you are our Redeemer. We know that, Lord, we can trust you. We know, God that our relationship is not built on things, but it is built on purpose and it is built on love. Father God, we thank you, Lord, because many have written us off because of how we looked going through certain circumstances. Many have written us off because of the things that we have gone through and the, and the, 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 the circumstances that we have faced. Many, Lord God, have chastised, but Father God, we are maintaining who we are in you, for you, and you alone. Oh, in the name of Jesus, Father, we are maintaining who we are in you, 
and for you alone, Jesus. We worship you alone. We serve you alone. And so, Father, mm -hmm. God, irrespective of what the accuser comes with, we yes. know Father, that you are our God. You are our mighty okay. God. And you yes. will deliver us in mm. due season. We bless you. We give you glory. Thank you, Lord. We give you honor. We give you praise. Praise and God. Right now, God, we pray that you will cover Thank us you, Lord. under Amen. your wings. Amen. Glory to God. Cover us, Lord. Cover, cover us, us, Jesus. Yes. Cover As we us, bless Lord. you right now and we give you thanks, mm. Lord, for what yes, you're yes. about to do, oh God, yes, and yes. what you're about to bring us out of. And what yes, you're about yes, to spear yes. us from. And what you're oh, about God. to do, Lord God, on our behalf, we thank mm. you now because thank you Lord. have never failed. We bless you. We never give you honor. Failed. We give you glory. We give you worship mm. right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Amen.